I am an online reseller as well as a self-proclaimed treasure hunter. But my real passion is in finding a great story. So make sure you subscribe because each week I'm bringing you my coolest finds and telling you their amazing stories. I am 98.3% sure that I went to a haunted estate sale, but I did find some cool things and I'm doing another giveaway in this video so you could own something from this haunted estate sale, which I know everybody wants something that's demon possessed. So make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video, folks. Thankfully, I also found some things that were worth a lot of money, so I'm still gonna do really well as a reseller, but as somebody that loves creepy things and weird houses. Like this also kind of appealed to a whole other side of myself. So I went into one of these bedrooms, you guys, and the weirdest thing was is they would use vintage Ouija boards and stick them on the walls. And I know that some of you will never ever even like touch a Ouija board, but I have found some really cool ones that are all like hand done and it's more of like an art form. Like they're really, really beautifully made and those can actually go for a lot of money. These ones were vintage, but they were sold in like toy stores. These were like mass produced, so they're not incredibly valuable, but I still think it's super weird they were like used as decoration. Because then I go into another bedroom and there's another one hanging on the wall. Like it was super normal to use these as decoration in this house, which makes me then immediately wonder like, what were these people's lives like? And for those of you that don't believe in Ouija boards, how on earth did they make this quilt from 1972 with the Twitter bird. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, in all of its glory on this quilt from the 70s, right next to this Ouija board. Obviously, a spirit told them what the Twitter bird was gonna look like and told them to put it on this quilt, right? One of the things that was in this room that I really, really wanted, a really amazing stained glass piece that was all hand done that said Glasgow on it. Now, Glasgow is a town in Scotland they have a lot of really amazing stained glass that comes out of this town, but again, they wanted over $100 for this. In order to ship this stuff, like a lot of times you're gonna get like little cracks in the glass because it's made with lead between each pane of glass and lead is incredibly soft for a metal. So it moves around in shipping, little cracks can show up in the glass and it can be a huge problem. I ended up going through the rest of this house and I'm going through like the dining room, the living room, and this house was really cool. Very like mid-century, they had this creepy angel just sitting on the table, which is going right along with the theme of the rest of this house. But I did find this. This is actually a really, really cool find. Keemsel is a lock company. They have an incredible collection of like art deco mantel clocks and wall clocks, but they also have really great mid-century clocks. It's glass, it looks mid-century, but it also has some really great art deco elements to it. It works perfectly, it comes in the original box. They only wanted $30 for this. So the other really cool thing that I found on this estate sale, which was perfect, was this mid-century modern Baccarat bird. I think it's like a pigeon. It might be like a duck. It could be, it's definitely not a swan. Baccarat made a lot of really, really great free-form, hand-blown mid-century glass back in like the 60s and 70s. So this was one of those pieces and uh, I'm super excited to grab this. It was in like perfect condition. No chips, no cracks, nothing. So then I made my way into the kitchen. You guys, this kitchen was a disaster. There was just like stuff kind of scattered everywhere. But this is also a really good place to kind of like find things. And anything that's not set up really like perfectly means that whoever is selling it may not quite know the values of things as much as they should. So I started going through some of the pottery, some of the bowls, some of the plates, and I was very pleased to find some of this cool stuff that was from like the 60s, 70s, 80s, things that they don't make anymore. I came across this, and this is Stonehenge Midwinter. This has the burnt brown pattern in the middle. It's got like a really cool, edge to it. This pattern hasn't been made since the 80s. They only made it for 10 years from the 70s to the 80s and then they just stopped making it. So people will still pay quite a bit of money if you can put together a good set of stuff. I ended up getting this entire set for $20. 
Right behind the set of the dishes that I bought was this set of dishes that I also bought. This is Coalport Country Ware, and now I had actually never seen these before because they, I mean, they just look really, really basic, you guys. There's nothing going on here. You can like see like outlines of leaves, but I looked these up and you guys, these are actually way better than the first set of dishes that I found. These things go for a lot of money. A set of four of these can go for over $150. One of them can go for over $50, $60 sometimes. They had not only the set of these mugs, but they also had like dishes and bowls and plates and all kinds of other things. So this was a really, really good set and he sold me this set for $20 also. But what's really, really scary about this house, I swear that one of these cabinets literally opened up on their own. Is there a draft somewhere? Is there a spirit in this house that's upset that I'm buying this china? Maybe they're mad that I just took their baccarat dove slash duck slash swan? The cabinet opens and I'm filming a plate to help you guys know what to sell when really I could be capturing footage of spirits that are trying to haunt the human race. But it doesn't get better, you guys. The people start like dissipating. There's nobody else in this estate sale except for me and then like the guy running this estate sale is in some far off room in the west wing of the house. And I'm wandering around. I find myself in this super weird area of the house. And I walk into this room. It is completely destroyed. And I'm wondering, am I even allowed in this room? Is this even part of the sale? Am I seeing something I shouldn't be seeing? There's some weird thing hanging from the ceiling. What do you do with that? Like, unless you're an acrobat or you're trying to like tie someone up and torture them. I noticed like this weird, very narrow staircase. It couldn't have been more than like two feet wide. I don't know why this would have been in a bedroom. Me being super curious and loving creepy things, I decide to follow up on this little lead. I go right up this staircase. It's like completely destroyed. There's like creepy slides off to the corner. And I wander around and there's just like this bed in complete disarray. Like somebody was literally just there 20 minutes before and heard me coming up these little stairs and ran off and like hid in a closet. The whole ambiance was just super duper strange. Then I'm like, don't know why. I feel like I need to get closer to this bed just to see what else I can find. And I notice like this weird pillow shoved in the vent of this vaulted ceiling that's covered in some kind of a red liquid. I'm not gonna say it's blood. I don't know what it is, but it is not a clean pillow shoved in this vent in the ceiling of this house. I could be murdered at any point in time. Like somebody looks like they were literally just tied up to this chair like a day ago. Why is this here? It doesn't make any sense. There's weird slides and like thinking back on it now, I really should have like looked at these. And then I keep looking and there's this like little room off to the side of this other room that nobody would even notice was there. Like it was like a closet and the door was just open. So I decided to like check this out because that's what you do when you're in a horror movie right before you die. I have to turn my flashlight on my phone because I can't see anything. And it is just this like creepy secret little room that looks like a closet. But I do keep my reseller roots and I'm still looking for things that I might be able to sell. I find this camera, leave it there, moving on. So I'm deciding to like wrap this up because at this point I'm starting to feel super creeped out by this whole situation. Nothing in this room is making any sense. The hair on my neck standing up at all points of time of being here. So I'm gonna leave. I'm a little concerned that a demon has somehow followed me home. So I'm just waiting for the bad dreams to like start kicking in. Now, if you guys wanna own something from this super haunted, super creepy estate sale, I'm doing another giveaway. I'm gonna be giving away this Baccarat Swan Duck Pigeon to one of my subscribers, but 
I want to know from you guys a ghost story that you've experienced or somebody that you know has experienced. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I want to know something creepy. I want to know something scary. I want to hear it all. And I will be drawing a name at random in an upcoming video. So it's super important that you make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss me calling your name. Because if you miss me calling your name, I can't ship you this and that's going to be really, really sad. So we have to do the drawing for the Baccarat Christmas ornament from last week's video. And and I'm gonna have my brother draw a name because that's my favorite thing to have him do. I've got everybody in this box that left a comment on last week's video. Tyler, what are you working on today? You guys, this typewriter was something that ended up getting returned. And when it got returned, it was bent into shapes that I had never seen in my entire life. This thing looks brand new. That's my little brother. I'm so proud of him. I'm just bursting with pride for my little brother. Thank you. He's like, let me just do my work. Leave me alone. Stop bothering me. J.I. 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 You are the winner of the Baccarat Christmas ornament. So please make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section below so that I can get in touch with you. We can get your address and ship this out to you. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.